right. Points, lines, and planes, section 1.1. If you're watching this video, you're seeking help. You're helping yourself, and that's a good thing. We're putting the learning in your hands. So here we go. Section 1.1 on points, lines, and planes. When we're talking about points, lines, and planes, there's three terms that we talk about as the undefined terms. Terms that don't really have a definition except that which we construct for them so that we can talk about them. Okay, And so these three things we can't see, we can't touch, but we're going to try to represent them with a definition and with a visual. Okay, And so what we're doing here with the point, it has no dimension. It has no form and it has no friends. It's shown by a dot. Okay, And so it's one of many and yet it, it, it is nothing. We represent it with a little bitty dot because we want to try to be able to talk about a point. And so this is the diagram for it. And so we might see on a picture, we might say, see A, well, we're using a capital letter. We're using a capital letter to name it. Okay, so a single capital letter names a point. A line extends in one dimension. It has an infinite number of points on it. We've picked two, A and B. But we can also say that this line goes on to infinity with an infinite number of points. So just because A and B are on there and we have drawn a picture of it doesn't mean that it's just those two or three or four, however many we could fit on there. It's a bunch. It's, it's, a, it's an infinite line. And so we would name this AB. But not just A, B, we put a little line on top of it because that little line tells us what it is. It's not a segment, that which we'll talk about. It's not a ray, which we'll also talk about. It's a line because it has a little line on top of it. But we could also call it line B, A. Or we could call it line L. That's a, that's a script L, a cursive lowercase l. I know it looks like an E, but it's a script lowercase l. So that's three ways that we can name that line. Notice that two of them involve using the actual points on that line, or two of the points, with a little mini figure on there. A plane extends in two dimensions. A line goes, you could call it length and width, or right and left, but the plane is going to go right, left, up and down. Now don't be mistaken, this yellow plane here is just a picture of that plane. The plane really extends to infinity. It's one point thick except the point has no thickness. So really we're talking about a series of points arranged to make up all of these. We're saying that it's R and K. I'm gonna put another point in there. A, and I'm also gonna put a little script R here. It's my best attempt at a script R. What we can call it is plain A, R, K, K, A, R, etc. Okay, so those three letters name a plane. Three letters name a plane. Unless we're using the script, because then we call it plane. And script R. Okay, plane R or plane K A R. Notice the difference. We have a regular R here, and we've got the script R. All right, so th that's how we name those three things that are undefined. Okay, so now that we've learned how to talk about them a little bit, Let's learn a little bit more vocabulary. Coplanar. Points that are on the same plane are coplanar. It makes sense. Think cooperation. You're in it together. You're in the same group. You're cooperating. Well, things are coplanar. They're in the same plane. I mean, look back here. A, R, and K were coplanar. They were all in the same plane. Three points. Okay? So what do you think the name for points on the same line would be? That's right. Colinear. Coline are on the same line. Recall to yourself, ask yourself the question, how many points can be on a line? How many points could be collinear? That's right, an infinite number of points because they extend on in one dimension. Okay, so that's some vocab. If I went too fast for you on that last one, go ahead and pause it, rewind it, listen to the explanation again. That's the beauty of this system is you don't have to go at my pace, you can go at your own pace. Example one, the plane. I've got a picture here of Beijing National Stadium called the bird nest by some. 
It's got a series of points on it. You see A, C, B, N, M, L, and K is tucked kind of in the middle here. There's the K. And I also have this script R in the middle of that plane. Okay, so I've got three lines that are denoted in red and the plane which is in yellow like in the example. So we're going to name four coplanar points. Now, coplanar means on the same plane. So four points on the same plane. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go N, M, L, and K. For those of you keeping score out there at home, notice I've used uppercase letters or capital letters. That's how I name points, by using capital letters. I've named four coplanar points. Could I name R as a coplanar point? No, I couldn't. R is not a point on this plane. R is just a letter that we've put there to kind of talk about that plane. So if you got that one, good job. Name three lines. Well, I've got red, since we're talking about these red lines, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to blue. Three lines, how do we name lines? Well, there's a point here, which is A, and a point here, which is B. So I could say A, B, but I wanna know what it is. What is it? Is it a ray, is it a segment? No, it's a line because I wanted to name line, so I'm going to put the line above it. I could also call that line BA, okay? Also, BC, the line, or CB, the line. And the third one is AC, the line, or CA. Notice, I've got two different names for each one, but they're the same line. So CA and AC are the same line. Remember, we've got to have that label on top. Name two planes. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to name plane um, K and M. I use three points in that line, three uppercase letters. Or I could say it's plane. L, M, N, or plane, watch out, script R coming at you, okay, or plane R. So I've, I've actually done three names for that same plane. Okay, so that's how we name figures. Remember, we're using all capital letters here when we're talking about the points or when we're talking about these lines. Now, here's a big chart. I recommend you copy this chart down in your notes. Okay, so if you need to pause at this point, I am not going to pause, but you can pause and catch up with me after copying these down. We're going to go on. Segment. It's also known as a line segment. When you think segment, you should think part, like a segment of a video. Is the part of a line consisting of two points and all the points between them? What does this look like? I'm going to draw the diagram first. It looked like this. AB is a segment. Notice, it's a segment because it doesn't continue. It doesn't extend, okay? That's the diagram. So I would call this AB, and I'd put a little segment over the top. Or I could call it BA. End point is a point at the end of a segment of the starting or the starting point of the ray. What does this look like? Let's see. If I've got segment CD or perhaps a ray EF an endpoint is a point at the very end of it so something where there's nothing past it so I could say C or D or E notice F does not qualify because F has something past it it's not on the end it's in the middle Array is a part of a line that starts at an endpoint and extends forever in one direction. Starts in one point, extends forever. The arrow means forever. Okay, so that arrow is telling me it's going on for a very long time. I'm going to call this ray GH. Watch what I do. It starts with G. Okay, so when I'm naming it,
I've got to start with the initial point. I couldn't do ray hg because I want to go from where it starts. Okay, It starts here and goes to infinity. That's where I want to start. Opposite rays. Two rays that have a common endpoint. So we're going to start with what's common. I'm going to start with this endpoint here. I'm going to draw one ray. I'm going to draw the other ray. You'll notice this kind of sort of looks like a line. Okay, Opposite rays, meaning they are going in opposite directions. And in reality, this should be perfectly straight, but I haven't made it perfectly straight. And so what I would say is A, B, we'll mix it up and go D. So A, B, and uh, A, D are opposite rays. Those are opposite rays. Notice, I've started with the initial point. It starts with A both times because that's where it comes from. Okay, moving along, drawing. Here's some things for you to draw. If you feel confident in what we just talked about, go ahead and pause it right here and draw for yourself. I'm not gonna pause, but if you need to pause, go ahead, and I'm just gonna keep rolling on through. A, a segment with the endpoints U and V. So, a segment, part of a line. Endpoints U. And V, interesting of note, the letter W is really actually made of two V's, if you'll notice. That's because the letters U and V used to be switched. So the V used to be the W, and so that's why, or the, U, the V used to be a U, and that's why a W is two V's. Opposite rays with a common endpoint Q. So here I go, I'm drawing this common endpoint Q. It's common because it's shared by this ray and this ray. Opposite rays. Now, to have a ray, really, technically, I should put some points on here. So I'll go A and I'll go B. And just for chagrins, we'll name them QA and QB. Those are my opposite rays there. Okay? QB. Those are the opposite rays, okay? Array with an endpoint M. So endpoint, meaning where it stops. And it contains N, N is on there. But M is really my featurette because it's the endpoint. M is my endpoint, it contains N. All right, here we go. Postulates. Postulates are statements that are accepted as true without proof. If you need to pause this slide, go ahead. I'm going to run quickly through them. Through any true points, there exists exactly one line. We know this is true because we always say the shortest distance between po two points is a straight line. Well, there's only one line to get there in this case. Through any three non-collinear points, there is exactly one plane containing them. So if there's three points, there's only one plane that contains them. If two points lie in a plane, I'm going to fire the editor here. Two points lie in a plane, then they lie. If two points lie in a plane, then the line, sorry, then the line containing them, contain those points, lies in the plane. So if they're on, if they're if they're in a plane and there's a line between them, it has to be in the plane as well, okay? Now, example three. Identifying points and lines. I'm gonna need to put a little bit more background information on this one for you, okay? So I've got a point here, it's point G, and there's a point down here, it's point H. Once again, this is going to be the script letter R. Notice how curly it is. And I'm also gonna have another point over here, F, and this nifty little line here is a script lowercase n. Name a line that passes through two points. Well we could say that line n passes through those two points or we could say line gh or we could say line hg. Okay so it's got it's got three separate names but that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Name a possible plane that contains three points. Well, plane R is 
plane R contains three points. It contains G, H, and F. But also plane G, H, F contains those three points as well by definition. Okay? Here we go. Moving right along. Postulates 1, 1, 4. Remember, statements accepted as true without proof. If two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. So when two lines cross, they intersect at one point. 1, 1, 5. If two planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. Okay? We're going to draw these in just one second. Okay? So what we've got is the exa exactly one line. So think about two lines here. They only intersect at one point. Okay, so I've got two lines that intersect at one point. Because a line is straight. It has to be straight. It can't be curved. So when your, your teacher's told you zigzag lines, well, that's a series of line segments, not a line. If two planes intersect, let's look at this. Here's one plane. I'm going to call it plane R. Keep it consistent. And then I'm going to draw another plane here in yellow. That intersects that plane. It cuts down through it. And where they cross is going to be a straight line. Because remember, these extend into infinity, so these are going to keep going. And this is going to be plane, call it M, make it real fancy. Okay? So those two planes intersect at one line. Okay? Example four, representing intersections. This is something for you to do on your own. A line that intersects a plane but does not lie in the plane, and two planes that intersect in one line. Key for this one, the second part, you've probably already seen during this presentation. So try that out. Tomorrow, come to class, have those two done. We'll talk, and I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching.